As far back as I can remember, I've enjoyed being outside. When I was little, I loved to go into the backyard and dig things up, checking out the worm tunnels, looking at the beetles, the eggs, the larvae, watching the life cycle of living things, and enjoying the communities of critters that lived underneath the soil. Today, you're joining me for a Beyond the Book, and we'll be reading Under One Rock, Bugs, Slugs, and Other Uggs, written by Anthony Fredericks, illustrated by Jennifer DeRuvio. Here is a field for insects to play in and acres of shade for turtles to lay in, with windbrush trees for birds to nest in, and sunsplash spaces for lizards to rest in. This is where, on this summer day, there lay a rock, all rough and gray. This is the rock. The rough gray rock was discovered by chance by a brown-skinned boy in ragged pants, a curious lad who wondered aloud what could be hiding in the red, rich ground. He lifted the rock, all rough and gray, that he saw in the field on that summer's day, and there he found some varied creatures, a village of animals with special features. These are the earthworms, all squiggly and round, who aerate the soil in the red, rich ground, below the big rock, all rough and gray, that hides a whole crowd on a summer's day. This is the army of hundreds of ants who dig twisting tunnels and farm tiny plants. Neighbors to earthworms all squiggly and round who aerate the soil in the red rich ground below the big rock all rough and gray that hides a whole crowd on a summer's day. This is the spider with her eight-eyed face who builds a home in this cool, dark place. A home near the army of hundreds of ants who dig twisting tunnels and farm tiny plants. Neighbors to earthworms all squiggly and round who aerate the soil in the red, rich ground below the big rock all rough and gray that hides a whole crowd on a summer's day. This is the beetle, all shiny and black, with grooves running down both sides of his back. A friend of the spider with her eight-eyed face, they live side by side in this cool, dark place. A home near the army of hundreds of ants who dig twisting tunnels and farm tiny plants. Neighbors to earthworms, all squiggly and round, who aerate the soil in the red, rich ground. Below the big rock, all rough and gray, that hides a whole crowd on a summer's day. Some tiny field crickets who sing with their feet search near the rock for some seeds they can eat. They live with the beetle, all shiny and black, with grooves running down both sides of his back. A friend of the spider with an eight-eyed face, they live side by side in this cool, dark place a home near the army of hundreds of ants who dig twisting tunnels and farm tiny plants. Neighbors to earthworms all squiggly and round who aerate the soil in the red, rich ground. Below the big rock, all rough and gray that hides a whole crowd on a summer's day. A sole millipede with a sensitive feel slips through the dirt in search of a meal. He plows by the crickets who sing with their feet and search near the rock for some seeds they can eat. They live with the beetle, all shiny and black, with grooves running down both sides of his back. He's a friend of the spider with her eight-eyed face. They live side by side in this cool, dark place, 
a home near the army of hundreds of ants who dig twisting tunnels and farm tiny plants. Neighbors to earthworms all squiggly and round who aerate the soil in the red, rich ground below the big rock, all rough and gray, that hides a whole crowd on a summer's day. These six tiny slugs, all covered with slime, creep over soil, eating most of the time, past one millipede with a sensitive feel, who slips through the dirt in search of a meal, and plows past the crickets, who sing with their feet, that search near the rock for some seeds they can eat. They live with the beetle, all shiny and black, with grooves running down both sides of his back. He's a friend of the spider with her eight-eyed face. They live side by side in this cool, dark place, a home near the army of hundreds of ants who dig twisting tunnels and farm tiny plants, neighbors to earthworms, all squiggly and round, who aerate the soil in the red, rich ground. Below the big rock, all rough and gray, that hides a whole crowd on a summer's day. The creatures and critters live together as one, beneath the gray rock, away from the sun. A collection of neighbors, the large and the small, and the place where they live is home to them all. It was fun sharing this book with you today. Now I invite you to come along as we move into our next adventure, getting to know the critters that live underneath the soil. And today I'm joined by my daughter, Miriam. After reading a few books about critters that live under rocks, under logs, and in the soil, we've decided today that we make a couple of potato traps. Potato traps are something that gardeners might use to attract little critters and remove them from the garden to protect their young plants and seedlings as they grow. But potato traps are also really great at attracting those critters so that we can observe them. Today, we're going to show you how to make a potato trap, and then we'll follow our potato trap over a couple of days out in our backyard. Miriam, have you made a potato trap before? Yes, I have a couple years ago at Cory Hill. Oh, okay. So, can you lead us through the instructions on how to make a potato trap? Sure. First, you cut it in half, and then you scoop out the inside, but don't get too close to the skin. Okay. And then it, you set it out in a garden, or anywhere that has good soil, to see what you find. All right. So, I'm going to do the part where we're cutting the potato in half. We're going to cut it in half the long way, so I'll do that part. Oh, that's a crispy potato. And Miriam, you'll get the scooper ready. So now I have two long halves of the potato. I'll give Miriam this long half. And you said next we're going to scoop out the insides? Yeah. But not too close to the skin. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see how you do it. Ooh, nice. Oh, I like how you turned the scooper around. Oh, look at that. So you don't just do one. No. Okay, you keep going. You have to have enough space. hollowed out your potato mm -hmm. and we're ready to put it outside. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So we're going to go out into our backyard. We've chosen two different places to put our potato traps, one in the backyard and one in the front yard. So we can compare when we find little critters in our potato traps, what's living where. Are you ready to go find a spot? Yeah. Excellent. All right. We're outside and we're ready to put our potato traps out. Miriam, you got the traps? Yeah. All right. Nicely done. All 
right, we've placed our potato traps. We're gonna check them tomorrow morning and then again the second day in the morning. But now, we wait. Here's potato trap number two. See anything yet? No. You're gonna move some of the mulch away? That's a good idea. No. All right, we'll go ahead and put it back and check another day. All right, we're gonna check potato trap number one on day two. Oh, interesting. Miriam, what did you find? a potato that's turned over. So did you see the deer in our backyard last night, Miriam? Yeah, I did. They were rooting all around and looking for things to eat, and I wonder if they were curious, came over to look at the potato, turned it over, and then left it. That's interesting. What are you going to do? I'm going to turn it back over and leave it for tomorrow. Okay, sounds great. Putting out potato traps has been a lot of fun. We've asked some of our Quarry Hill staff if they'd put potato traps in their backyards. Let's check in with them and see what they found. Hey everyone, it's Jill from Quarry Hill and I'm about to go check my potato trap. This is the one I put by the log and I can see there's a little beetle larva in there. It's even been chewing and eating some of the potato. But here he is. Oh, cool, you guys. It's a millipede. Yes, I can see all the legs. We caught a millipede. Okay, so here is trap number one, Addie. It's gonna check she hit it under the rhubarb. Anything? Nothing. But Bummer. there's some mold. Ooh, there is some mold. Oh, thanks, Addie. All right, let's put it back underneath. There's a door on it, too. <laughs> I like your door. All right, put it back with the rhubarb. Let's go check the next one. Potato trap number four. Uh, just some mold. Nothing. Hey, there's a little bug. It's down there. Oh, there's a tiny little bug. Let's see if we can get it. Tiny and one teensy weensy Can you bug. see it running around? It's moving. It likes potatoes. <laughs> this is the same bug that was on mine the other day. No, use was same kind. Yous was tiny. Pretty neat. You want to put it back? He can stay. Check Kirk's potato trap. Let's take a look. Oh, so one isopod and evidence that it and maybe other things have been eating little holes in the potato. I'll put it back. Maybe we'll check in the morning again. Let's check Kirk's potato trap again. Oh, quite a bit of stuff this morning. 
potato, potato bugs, pill bugs, isopods. Some people call them roly polies and slugs. Quite a bit of stuff this morning. Cool. Hey everyone, Miss Carrie here from Cory Hill Nature Center and I'm doing my first day check of my potato traps. Did a little bit of an experiment with mine. Got one in, in leaves and one in wood chips. So we'll look at the one in the leaves first. And looks like that one is empty. So we're gonna put that one back down again, cover it up a little bit. And over on this side, I've got my one that's in the wood chips. Kind of put it under some a little bit of a barrier. I've got a lot of bunnies and squirrels, so I wasn't sure if they were going to eat them. So let's see. Oh, well, looks like one little roly-poly in there. All right. Well, cool. See what we have by tomorrow. Hey, everyone. Miss Carrie here again. We're doing our next day's check of the potato traps. We had a little bit of rain, so... Instead of a hot potato, we got wet potatoes. We'll see if maybe that helped. Here's our first one that's in the leaves. Oh, looks like we've got one little roly-poly in there. Rest of it is empty, so we'll put that back, see what our next day's ones, and then we'll come on over to the one that's over here in our rocks. <clears throat> Under the rock. Looks like nobody's been able to get to it, which is good. And we'll see if this has got... I had a roly-poly last time. We'll see if we've added to it. Nope. Now this one's empty. <laughs> All right, well. Thanks for coming on the adventure with us. Take a look at this selection of books from our Quarry Hill Library that can help you continue your adventure with bugs, slugs, and other rugs. Bye-bye. <laughs>